In this paneling tools grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can simply use a series of point attractors, as you can see here, and track a, a series of circle towards those points. And you can see against that uh, we can also change the magnitude to produce different results. So basically, this, this tutorial can help you to understand how you can use point attractors to produce this. Uh, such a grid and at the end you will also learn how to produce the solid panel so I can bake the extrusion and as you can see here we can produce this panel so maybe you want to produce that by a laser cut file or a CNC file so this tutorial will cover uh, two sets of uh, attraction that is point attractions and another one will be uh, curve attractor so you can see that we can also change the attractor by giving it a curve so this will be the next uh, tip I will give you so stay tuned to the end okay, first of all you can download the plugin from our website I'm going to put the link in the description so let's just get started from scratch so first we are going to uh, install the paneling tools. Uh, you can install the paneling tools for Rhino 5 and 6. So you will see that we have a paneling tools here up here and in this tutorial we, we, are, uh, we are going to cover the grid attractors and this will be the point attraction and the curve attraction. So first we need to have a surface. So I'm going to just simply draw a rectangle here and here we go. We can go to the params menu surface and import this into grasshopper so let's just put the bifocals plugin so you can see this okay this is the surface i'm going to set this to the surface and just hide the surface okay the next step is going to go to the paneling tools section and in the grid section you can see that there are uh, different grids you can make uh, which these are the grids you are uh, you can make by uh, composing a set of uh, grids or intersection of curves or using a planar extrusion so on but for now what we're going to use is to use the surface uh, grid so you can see that we can produce a surface distance that means that you can basically divide your surface uh, based on a distance so this is good if you want to just produce a complete module on your surface uh, surface domain chord distance which is for the freeform surface a chord is defined by, by the length and the length is basically the distance. Okay, that's not really important because what we are using now is the surface domain number and that will help you to simply divide your surface into U and V numbers. So let's just put a number slider to this and give this to the UV because I want, have, uh, I want it to have the same numbers, okay? And at the end, uh, we are going to uh, use this grid to produce the circles. So, uh, what you can do after you produce a grid, doesn't really matter what you use, your surface dis distance or domain length or domain number, but mainly if you want to divide it to numbers, you can use the number, you can go to the attractor section, and you can use the point attractor, for example. So we're going to cover the point attractor now, and you can give this grid to the grid, okay. So now we need a point attractor. We can simply extract this, and set multiple points, maybe one here and one here. And you can see that there are two grids produced. One is the surface domain number and then is the point attractor. Let's just turn this off. And you can see that when I change this point, the grid is also changing. So you can change the distance of those deformation based on the magnitude. So let's just give this from minus three to three with two decimals, right? So you can see that when I increase that, you can see by minus it's going uh, against that and by plus going towards the point attractors. And we can simply uh, deform this point attractor. So to have a better point attractor, we have talked about the value at surface. Uh, you can also watch this tutorial in the card up here. So for now, we can go simply go and use the value at surface and use the surface. Remember, for evaluate surface, we have to reparameterize it and use the MD slider because this will cover the 
a surface from 0, 0 to 1, 1, and this will make the surface domain go from 0 to 1, right, and from 0 to 1. Okay, I can't really draw by this, but for now you can see that I can cover all the surface. So we can simply cover the surface by using the evaluate surface, or if you want to know more, you can see the tutorial. Okay, so let's just simply give this a shift and give it two point attractors, and we can just move the another attractor. So this point can be go to the point attractor, and now we can control the point attractor by MD sliders, and then we can also go back to the magnitude, so maybe 2.5 is enough, so I'm going to go minus 2.5 to 2.5. So here we go, and we can control that, okay. So now you can see that there are two outputs. This is the grid, which you can see if I bake it, we have a series of points. If I just close this, we can see these points in Rhino. But what we want to do is to simply go to the paneling tool section and go for paneling 2D. I'm going to use the cellulate uh, because I'm going to cover other morph uh, tutorial, morph uh, 2D, 2D list, and map and mean in the other tutorials. But for this tutorial, because I want to just give you the curve and the point attractor, uh, we are going to use the cellulate, the most easiest way you can use that. Okay, so let's just go for cellulate. And you can see that this is simply needs a grid. If I give this grid, you can see that this will produce a cellulation of those grid. If you give it to the simple grid here, we will have a simple grid. So it doesn't really matter. If you want to have a simple grid, you can just uh, connect the cellulate to the surface domain number. Or if you want to have a deformed grid, you can give that to the deformed grid from the point attractors or whatever attractor you're using. So you can see that I can change this and have the grid. So here we can control more about this grid. The wires are the lines. You can use those lines if you want to use them. The cells are those points. But what is important here is that we have also the meshes. Okay, so let's just bake them so you can understand. We also have those meshes. You can combine that with Weaverbird and a deform uh, and use those to produce organic meshes. But for now, what I'm going to do is to go to the curve section and go to this spline and use this NURBS curve, okay? So now we're going to go to the NURBS curve and use those cell points to the vertices. And what happens is that it's going to be 0, 1, 2, and 3. So this is going to be the curve. And I'm going to go to the periodic uh, input and set this to true because I want to make it a closed one then we can simply just turn this off okay and now you can see those circles are emerging from that grid we can deform that and we can also change the point attract but because of that the circles are made from that cellulite grid we want to scale them a little bit so I'm going to just scale this and use that the geometry we want to scale is those curves right uh, the center of this is simply the center of the meshes so here you have to use the area and find the center of those meshes and give that to the center of that okay so we can just give this a factor so let's just make this number you can see that we can change this and change uh, the scale of this and produce smaller circles. So here we go and we can turn off the grid and we have a better organized grid. So let's just increase this a little bit so you can see that you can also deform this more. Okay. And when I change this, you can see that the results is going to change. Also, another technique you can use is to simply deform this surface. So let's just go to our base surface here. I'm going to rebuild this and use the soft edge surface to deform this because I want to show you that also deformation can help you uh, to produce new results. So let's just turn this off. And if I look at this from top, you can see that this, uh, the deformation of that surface also can help you to uh, deform those circles more and more. So remember, you can also have uh, non uh, plan on surface and produce better results and at the end if you want to have them on the ground because this is on the surface we can simply use project 
and use the project onto into a plane and project this on the ground, which is in the XY plane. Turn this off, turn the surface off. And uh, now we can simply change the results. You can see that this is going to increase your deformation. And if you have a parametric surface, you can also control those uh, the, uh, moving those surface in the Z direction and have uh, other results so you can have more control on your parametric design. Okay, so this was the point attractor technique you can do. And at the end, I can simply connect a curve in the parms menu to the surface, base surface we had. Uh, let's just project this on the ground. So I'm going to project this on the ground here. Again, turn this off. Now you can see that this is also on the ground. Uh, let's just offset this curve a little bit outside so we have a distance from that. And now we can use these a series of curves to produce a surface, which is the surface between those circles. And we can simply go to the surface and use the boundary surface tool. Okay. And let's just give the input to the edges and with the shift key. I'm adding this up uh, because we want to make a boundary surface from all of those curves. We have to flatten this. So all of those curves are going to be in one group. So let's just flatten this and we are good to go. We will just wait. And here we have the results. Let's just turn this off and we have the surface. Let's just bake this. And here we go. You can see that we can produce a surface from that. And at the end, we can also extrude that to show that we have a panel. So let's just extrude that in the Z direction, maybe 2.2. And we can bake that. Okay, so for now, you can see that we have used that technique to produce a deformation on the grid and produce point attractor and make the grid deformed okay and the next thing i want to show you is to use a curve attractor to make the deformation on this so we're going to uh, have another thing uh, instead of this point attractor so let's just delete this point attractor and go to the paneling tools the grid attractors and use the curve attraction right so now the grid is exactly as the same. We use that. Now we need the curve attractor. So if I just go here and go to the curve spline and use the curve on surface, you can also use this one. Remember, you have to reparameterize that. So the surface is from 0 to 1 and 0 to 1. And then you can give that UV coordinates with a shift key. And let's just add another one here here we have it and you can see that this is going on the surface which was like this so let's just turn back to the flat surface and make that on the flat surface so it's more controllable and let's just set this okay turn this off and now you can see that this is the curve we can give this to the curve attractor. And again, we can give this a magnitude. So let's just give this. And you can see uh, how that curve can deform this. You can also give this a minus one, right? And you can also change that curve. Let's just turn this on so we can see that. And we can decide what we want, right? And now we can use that grid to cellulate and use the steps we just done before. So now you can see we can also produce that by simply giving that to the uh, curve attraction, giving to the cellulate and producing the results. So now we can also connect a surface from the Parms menu to the one we scaled them and produce those surfaces if you want. So you can just bake this into a one layer and bake the extrusion maybe in the layer two. Give this materials if you want to produce different results. Okay, so this is the way you can produce a 
pointer tractor and a curve tractor in uh, paneling tools and uh, use that curve tractor and pointer tractor to produce a series of circles and deform them with those attractors. Okay, that was it for today's tutorial. And those who are the Grasshopper course members also can download the example files. I've put that for Rhino 5 and Rhino 6 into different folders. And they can have the point, curve, random, vector, panel, uh, plane, Gaussian curvature, and mean curvature example files so they can have a more view and understand more about the paneling tools cellulate file. Thank you for watching and subscribe to our channel and you can also watch uh, something that is related to this video that corner and see you next time.